Hey you guys, Phoebe here from Little Grey Box. Now Matt and I took an amazing trip to Sweden and today I finally wanted to share with you a few of the things you really need to know before you go. life. Now if you haven't already heard of the Swedish tradition of fika, you are going to love it when you visit Sweden. I know I did. So fika isn't just a coffee break, it is something much more meaningful than that. Fika is about taking time out from your busy day, whether it be at work or somewhere else, and making the time to connect with people. There are all different kinds of sweets that you will be served with your amazing Fika. The most common one, now I'm not even gonna try and pronounce the names of these things because I'm gonna butcher the beautiful Swedish language, but they have these beautiful cinnamon rolls. They are incredible. They, when they're fresh out of the oven, they smell amazing and they go so well with coffee. The sweets are hot. Great news, the Swedes are hot, I know. When Matt and I first touched down and we were walking around, we were like, oh my goodness, oh my goodness, oh my goodness. Everyone is beautiful. It is eye candy wall to wall. So make sure you pack yourself a neck brace. Make sure you stretch every morning because you're gonna be doing some of this. <laughs> There's an IKEA approach to life. In my opinion, the sweets tend to be a practical bunch and there seems to be more of a do-it-yourself approach to life. Now, when we dug a little bit deeper, it seems that people tend to have pretty good jobs. So there isn't the need for those kind of assistant roles, if that makes sense. So when you go to a hotel and you check in, there's a good chance you might take your bags up to your hotel room yourself, for example. So just keep an eye out for that. There will be moments where maybe it's more of a do-it-yourself approach than it is a full service approach. Equality has already been addressed. If you get the chance, I really recommend you take the time to talk to one of the locals about equality in Sweden. It is inspiring, it is incredible, it is educational. We got the chance to talk to a couple of people and just loved hearing about it. In terms of same-sex marriages, for example, you know, the, the rights that they have in relation to maternity and paternity leave is just incredible. I mean, they even have rights for dogs where they can't be left at home alone for certain amounts of time because it's inhumane. And if you are there for pride, you have to go. We sadly weren't, but our guide was telling us all about it. She showed us photos from last pride and it just looked amazing. I would love to be there for it. Cash isn't always accepted. Before you go running off to the bank or a money changer to get stocked up on cash, like we did, you need to know that cash isn't widely accepted. So we found ourselves with lots of Swedish krona and no place to use it because nobody really took cash. You might hear stories about people with chips in their hands in Sweden. We actually met one of the guys that had a chip in his hand. He just swipes his hand and that is it. Train ticket paid for, coffee bought, off you go. <laughs> so do make sure that you don't stock up on cash. And hey, if you do have a card, like a bank card that charges you a lot of fees every time you make a transaction, I would recommend just looking into finding one that doesn't. Matt and I recently switched to one and it's saving us a ton of money when we travel, guys. So make sure you look into that and find something that's right for you. The sun doesn't really set in summer. We visited in midsummer and it was beautiful. But here's the thing, the sun doesn't really set. I mean, as videographers and photographers, we're always looking for that golden hour, which is when the sun goes down and it's all gooey and golden light and lovely. That's something like 11 p.m. So we were staying up really late to try and get these gorgeous shots. So just be prepared for that. I mean, the great thing about it is that the Swedes are loving life at that time. They are all outside. They're so full of life and full of energy and you've got so much daylight to make the most of your trip to Sweden. They're really into recycling. Let me tell you a little story. Here in Australia, we have one recycling bin for recycling. <laughs> Over in Sweden, I saw seven different bins outside a house and our guide was saying to us, yeah, we have seven different kinds of recycling and I was blown away. It is just so cool. So when you're there, make sure if you get the chance to ask some locals about what their recycling program is all about. It may sound a bit weird, but it's actually really interesting when you hear them talk about it. Keep an eye out for pickpockets. Now look, we didn't have a single issue when we were in Sweden. We went to Stockholm and there was nothing that happened to us. There was not a single moment we felt unsafe. 
That said, our guide did warn us just in some of the busier areas just to keep an eye out for pickpockets. And lo and behold, we did see a couple of people kind of casing out our friend's backpack at one point. Just keep it to the front of your mind, you know, bring your backpack to the front or make sure that it's locked up. Don't keep your passport and your wallet just hanging out the back or, you know, your phone loose in your back pocket. Just common sense approach and you'll be fine. English is widely spoken. You're gonna have no language barrier whatsoever. As long as your English is good, I suppose. But I have to say, I think this we speak quite a few different languages. We were very intimidated. <laughs> They're so well educated and so worldly. It was amazing. But yeah, you won't have any language barriers everywhere we went. Everyone was so nice to us and happy to talk to us and help us if we needed it. Vegetarians and vegans are covered. I don't know about you, but I was a little bit worried about how I would be received as a vegetarian in Sweden because Instantly, I'm just picturing Vikings, and I don't really see a Viking sitting down to a big old bowl of salad. Everywhere I went, it was no trouble. And of course, there was no language barrier, so it was really, really easy. They wait all year for summer. Like I said, we visited in summer, and there was just this electricity in the air. I mean, we were there right around midsummer, and you could feel the energy swell around Stockholm. It was incredible. Our guide was beautiful, and she just kept laughing and smiling and getting so excited, like, yes, midsummer summer is coming. I understand that in the winter in Sweden there is a lot of darkness. There's not so much sunlight hours. So as soon as summer hits the Swedes go nuts for it. So I really recommend if you can visiting in summer because there's just this amazing energy and it's just going to make your trip that much more enjoyable. The archipelago is stunning and worth the trip. The Stockholm archipelago is actually made up of tens of thousands of tiny little islands. I know, if you knew that, good on you. <laughs> I certainly didn't. And it's a really cool thing because it means, if, especially if you visit in summer, there are heaps of places to go to. So we went and did a little island hopping trip. We just caught the ferry around and it was stunning. I mean, when I think of Sweden, I immediately think of Stockholm, but you should also get out and see some of these islands. It was some of the most beautiful scenery I have ever experienced. And of course, because you're visiting in summer, there's so much daylight to make the most of it. There are lots of cute dogs. Ah, I think I'm gonna change my job description to travel dogger. Dogs in Sweden are everywhere. It's um, more widely accepted to have dogs and take them with you everywhere. They're all so well behaved. They'll be lined up with their owners at cafes and going around town and if you're like me and you have to touch them the owners are so lovely I just asked oh can I take a photo of your dog can I touch a dog and everybody was so happy and I love finding out the names of people's dogs especially overseas because it's always something unique I actually wrote a blog post about dogs I met in Sweden complete with beautiful photographs if you want to read that and check it out it's linked in the description below you can drink the tap water it might seem like a no-brainer but just to confirm you can absolutely drink the tap water in Sweden and and I can confirm it is delicious. So make sure you bring a reusable water bottle that you can refill and take out with you when you're going around sightseeing. The Swedes are super lovely. Oh, you guys, we met so many amazing people. It's not even funny. Everywhere we went, everyone was so kind and welcoming. And if we approached a local and we wanted to have a chat, they were more than happy to do that. You know, just ask them questions about themselves and where they live and life in Sweden or their dog or what they were eating or what they were drinking. Thinking. Everyone was so, so nice. Seafood is king. If you love seafood, you are in for a real treat because so do the Swedes. They have this amazing thing called toast skagen. I hope I said that right. And it's like an open sandwich and it is piled high with shrimp. And there is so much good seafood on offer in Sweden. So make sure you make the most of it. The cities empty out during midsummer. Now, if you do plan your trip around summer, just beware that in midsummer, all of the Swedes like to get out onto the archipelago and make the most of the great outdoors. So that means the cities will be empty. The downside for tourists just means that some shops may be closed during this time. So if there is something you specifically wanted to see or do, just make sure you check ahead of time that it's going to be open. And again, midsummer, make the most of archipelago guys, get out there and mix it with the locals. You will love it. Don't be afraid to get off the beaten track. Now, of course, you're going to want to visit Stockholm, but I would recommend getting off the beaten track. We went to some places like Sigtuna and it was just lovely. And it's a place I never thought to visit. So you can afford to be adventurous when you visit Sweden. I mean, it's pretty easy to get around. English is widely spoken. Why not? Why not have an adventure and just get away from everything and see somewhere 
that most tourists don't. Sweden was a dream destination of Matt and mine for a really long time and going there it did not disappoint. We absolutely loved it. It's a little bit hard to describe and I'm going to do my best, but it's almost like you come away from it wanting to be your best you because that's how the Swedes lead by example. They are lovely people. They are champions for equality. They are technologically advanced. I mean, the Swedes invented Spotify. Am I right? They take care of people. They are aware of mental health issues. You know, something like Fika, it's not just a tradition. They recycle, they're caring for the planet. Their food is amazing. They have a focus on organic produce. They support vegetarians and vegans. They encourage their citizens to have great jobs and they provide the infrastructure that's necessary for that. They really do live well. The whole place is beautiful. It's like a fairy tale. The sunsets are magic. The scenery is stunning. It is utopia. It's definitely a place where you can get a whole lot of life inspiration and it kind of brought my home into my mind in a different way. It gave me a different perspective on life and it really did inspire me to do better and be better. All right, that is it from me, you guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you don't already, be sure to subscribe and say hello in the comments below. Have a great weekend and I will see you next week. Love ya.